What's up guys and gals, my name is Walking Gamer, and I'm back to explain another of the Kingdom Hearts video game stories. And today we're going to be talking about Rechained Memories, which comes right after Kingdom Hearts 1, and is the prequel to Kingdom Hearts 2. This game has a different twist to it, as in the gameplay-wise is very different compared to any of the other Kingdom Hearts games. But story-wise, it is very essential to know this story if you want to know anything or understand any of the events that starts to happen in Kingdom Hearts 2, because otherwise, if you don't know these events, you will be completely lost at the beginning of Kingdom Hearts 2, like I was, because I skipped this game. But let's get into the story of Kingdom Hearts Retain of Memories. Before we get started, there are going to be a lot of characters in this video, so I'm going to put many of the characters right here in their affiliation with each other, so you won't be too confused, and if you need a reference back, you can come look at, back at the beginning of this video to understand a lot of these characters, because when I played through this game, believe me, all I saw was a lot of X's, and I was just confused. So hopefully this will help a little as you go through this video. Just for a short recap, the whole goal for Sora, Donald, and Goofy now is to find Riku and Mickey who were locked away in the door of darkness at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1. At the beginning of Kingdom Hearts Reach Channel Memories, we begin where we left off at the end of Kingdom Hearts 1, where we find Sora, Donald, and Goofy walking down a windy path where a man in a black hood appears and directs Sora toward a place called Castle Oblivion. When they enter, they re-encounter the man in the hood, who explains that they have forgot all their abilities upon entering this castle. He proceeds to create a deck of cards made from swords in his friend's memories. Just for a side note here, these cards that are given to Sora, Donald, and Goofy are actually their memories inside a card, and they use these cards in order to enter different worlds, and also in gameplay-wise, they use these cards to attack and use magic of any sort in summons and tells them that everything they encounter in this castle will be based on their memories, or more often, Sora's memories. The higher they go, the more memories they will lose. So Sora, Donald, and Goofy then head through the castle. By going through these different floors, they go through many of the worlds that they traveled through in Kingdom Hearts 1, with running into old characters that actually don't remember them at all. And in certain worlds, Sora, Donald, and Goofy don't remember the characters in the worlds either. This being a side effect of the world or the castle affecting their memory. And as the story progresses, you will soon run into many mysterious people who are the ones controlling the castle and are part of a group called the Organization. As Sora begins losing his memories, he also starts to remember things and starts to remember a girl named Nominate as an old friend. And like seeing a member of the organization, then tells him that she is a prisoner in the castle that gives Sora the motivation and incentive to proceed throughout the castle and to free her. You see, the bad guys are holding her captive somewhere deep inside the castle. He then runs into a Riku, or a replica of Riku, but he's created and controlled by another organization member called Vexen, with a purpose that we will learn later on in this video. Uh, what's, what's wrong with you? We're supposed to be friends! Please, Sora. Since when have you ever cared about me? We then meet Axel, who seems to be working for the organization, but is actually a double agent, and he releases Nominate and allows her to meet Sora. What are you... saying? Just that there's no one here who would want to get in your way. Just make it count. Sora discovers Nominee to be the one manipulating his memories. I took the people in memories that were inside Sora's heart. And little by little I replaced them with false memories. By being forced to do so by Marluxia, the controller of Castle Oblivion, and the fear who lured Sora there. As part of his plan to overthrow the rest of the organization with Arxene. Why let Nominee go? If it weren't for your needless meddling, we could have turned the Keyblade Master to come and serve us. Oh, right, your big plan. You use Naminé to rewrite Sora's memory piece by little piece, and he turns into her total puppet. Then, using Naminé and Sora together, you and Larxene overthrow the organization. Sora then reaches the top of Castle Oblivion with defeating any of the organization members that got in his way. This including Marluxia, who is at the top of Castle Oblivion. 
After which, Sora meets up with Naminé and she asks him a question, whether he would rather keep his memories from the castle and forget his old memories forever, or to remember his old memories and then forget everything that happened in the castle. And he chooses to keep his old memories. So Naminé then puts Sora and Donald and Goofy into pod-like machines to help them regain the memories they lost in the castle. Before they are put to sleep, Zoro and Naminé promise to meet again as real friends once he reawakens. And even though he knows that he will forget everything, he still believes that they will be friends when they meet again. And this is the end of Sora's story in Rechain of Memories. Will always be inside me somewhere. I'm sure of it. Yeah, you're right. Okay, it's a promise. Good. Until later. Where am I? And on the other side of things, we have Riku's side, which is called Reverse Rebirth, where Riku wakes up in the space between worlds and was awakened by a voice thought to be Ansem, who tells Riku that he should sleep and that the sleep will protect him. But when Riku denies the voice, it tells him that he should take this card and to go into Castle Oblivion to find the truth, in quotes. In the castle, Riku fights his inner darkness, in which a part of Ansem still resides inside Riku. It could take over his body if he allows the darkness to consume him. So Riku battles upwards from the basement levels of the castle Oblivion. And along the way, Vexen fights Riku to obtain his data in order to create the replica that Sora fights. And Vexen is planning on using this replica as darkness in order to combat Sora's light and to stop Sora's advancement in the castle so he can combat Marluxia's plan. On the way, Riku battles and defeats Lexus, a member of Vexen's circle. But during the battle, he is dragged into the realm of darkness where he's almost consumed by the darkness. But he is saved by King Mickey when Ansem nearly succeeds in taking over Riku's body. Uh, yeah. Riku, fight! Don't let him win! By this time, Marluxia had been eliminated by Sora. Another of Vexen's allies, Zexion, attempts to dispose of Riku by drowning him in a light. Riku is saved by Naminé, who is disguised as Kairi, who helps him control his darkness, allowing him to defeat Zexion. Side of darkness. I know who I am. When did that happen? You were always terrified of the dark before. Not anymore! <laughs> Mickey then appears there as a whole because of a card that appeared to him that led him to Riku. Riku then uses this card and arrived in a small town where he then meets Diz, an individual that was interested in Riku, and then helps explain that he was trying to help Riku choose or to find out what side Riku would choose, darkness or light. And at this time, he was in a place called Twilight, the area between light and dark. We find out that Diz was a voice when he arrived and that led him to Castle Oblivion. So Diz then sends him to find Naminé to choose light or darkness. You are to meet Naminé, then choose. Naminé? Who's that? You will know soon. <laughs> Riku runs into his replica on the way to Naminé. The replica has learned of his altered memories and seeks to justify his existence by fighting and defeating the real Riku, only to be destroyed by him. Where will my heart go? Does it disappear? It'll go somewhere. Maybe to the same place as mine. Riku then chooses to face Ansem upon learning from Naminé that Ansem lives in his heart. I don't need my heart locked. I'm ready. I'm gonna fight Ansem. And defeats him after Diz helps to summon him from Riku's heart to fight. <laughs> this is the end. After he wins the fight, Riku sets out with King Mickey to find out how he can utilize both his darkness and light. And that is the end of Kingdom Hearts Rechain of Memories. Elf. Huh? I'd like to walk the road with ya!
And there we have it at the end of this game. Sora is left in a little pod along with Goofy and Donald trying to regain their memories with along with Riku and Mickey who are off to try to find out how Riku control his newfound power. And next on our list is a story behind Kingdom Hearts 2 which is going to be yes complicated like this one too. But again I will try to do my best to de de decomplicate this stuff the best I can. But if you enjoyed this video, punch a like button in your fist. If there's anything you would like for me to explain, comment down below and I will try to help explain it the best I can. But yeah, thanks for watching. I'm The Walking Emma. I'll see you on next time. Peace out.